Hi everyone and welcome to another video and today we're going to be talking about home labs. Uh, more specifically I wanted to talk a little bit about my home lab and uh, this might give you some ideas in terms of how you can build your home lab but basically the premise of this home lab is to learn about new technology really. So if you're in IT for example or if you're just interested in about learning different technologies uh, such as for example Rancher or you know, learning about Proxmox or learning about Jenkins or Portainer or any of the clouds, for example, uh, having a home lab is a really good uh, approach to uh, being able to learn and also practice uh, what you learn at the same time. Uh, so without further ado, let's just jump into it and I'll show you what I did uh, or what I do for my home lab. So right from the beginning, what I do is, or let's talk about the Proxmox installation because that's pretty much the foundation of my home lab. Uh, in my particular case, I have two hosts. Uh, and these two hosts uh, are hosting a couple of virtual machines. Uh, in my case, uh, there's about uh, six virtual machines or so. And out of these six virtual machines, I would say PFSense is my uh, firewall. This is pretty much kind of like how all my services communicate with the outside world. Uh, I also use PFSense for routing. Uh, I also have TrueDAS as my virtual machine, Ubuntu test server to test things out. And then I have the Neo and Prometheus virtual machines for uh, my Docker containers. This is pretty much where I run a lot of the services of my lab in containers. I prefer to try and use containers over virtual machines whenever possible. Uh, and I also have a vault instance that I want to talk about in another video. Now, these virtual machines are, like I said, uh, mentioned earlier, running on top of two hosts, so host one and host two. Uh, and for the hardware side of things, what I ended up doing was I just bought two uh, Lenovo desktop PCs, they're like small four-factor PCs with an i5 uh, that is a 6-core 12-thread and 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, and I included some additional local SSDs so that I can put my virtual machines on it. Now, I'm not, uh, I also have shared storage as well. And the shared storage is basically being provided by the Synology NAS that I pretty much configured to run as my central storage hub for my home network, if you will. So aside from storing like different uh, files uh, and data on this uh, Synology, uh, I also run a Docker service. And within this Docker service, I host a couple of Docker containers like PyHole, which is basically a DNS server for my entire house. Uh, I also host a Homer container, which is basically uh, this entire dashboard right here. Uh, I can make another video on Homer at some point later on but it is just basically a dashboard with a bunch of different links that I can click on to access the different services. And I have Uptime Kuma, which is basically my uh, monitoring solution that I use for monitoring the various different services that are in the lab, uh, monitoring the hardware like the Proxmox hosts. And Uptime Kuma is basically a, like I mentioned earlier, a monitoring solution that you can configure a bunch of different monitors. So for example, if I wanted to configure like an HTTP monitor, or a ping or a DNS. I have different types of monitoring options uh, that I could use. And this is pretty useful for me because it's a very simple application to deploy, but it gets the job done when it comes to monitoring. Another monitoring solution that I like to use for my home lab is a combination of Prometheus and the Grafana dashboards. So basically, uh, Grafana and Prometheus are both containers that are running in my lab. and what I like about Grafana is that I can take basically metrics and data captured from Prometheus and then basically visualize it in this dashboard here. And this kind of gives me like a much better view uh, from like being able to see what each of my individual containers, for example, uh, are doing, right? So how much memory they're using, how much CPU they're utilizing, network set, network receive, all these different metrics you're able to visualize within uh, Grafana. Uh, another tool that I'm very, um, that I use quite often actually is Portainer. And Portainer is basically my uh, container management uh, platform, if you will. So I have Docker containers that were running in the Morpheus and Neo hosts because this allows me to basically look at my containers. I can stop, I can kill the containers, I can restart them, I can remove them. I can do all the containers in one shot as well. I can add the container. So a lot of the CLI commands that you can basically use to do the same things, you kind of have this in one uh, interface and it just makes things a lot easier to kind of, um, you know, troubleshoot and look through because I mean like things like logs, for example, I can click here, I can see all of the logs for 
my containers, which is like very simple for me to access and see. I can, you know, I can copy these logs. I can download the logs. I have access to, right, to do all these things. Um, I can look at like various different uh, stats. For example, I can access the command line, right? If I wanted to go to a console, I can execute certain types of commands if I wanted to. So this allows me to kind of manage my containers in a much more efficient manner. Uh, I can also see things like uh, volumes. I can see things like networks, images that I've downloaded for the containers. Uh, you can even go to app templates and basically download various different uh, containers that are already available to you, like Nginx, for example, uh, MySQL, MariaDB, PostgreSQL, MongoDB. You know, you can download Redis. Uh, you have a lot of options. And this is just a template that comes pre-configured or pre-packaged with uh, the uh, pertaining installation. But you can actually download this, or you can actually get custom templates and add them to pertainers so that you would see different images or different containers here uh, from the ones that are here by default, because obviously it doesn't contain all of the uh, containers. And of course, if you wanted to install the uh, you know containers manually, you can always do so through you know by going here, basically you know filling it, filling out the information you need to fill out for the uh, specific container that you want to install. So you do have a lot of options in terms of how you manage containers. And I just think that this is probably a pretty, pretty simple way. Uh, and you also have the ability to manage uh, hosts. Uh, in this case, they talk about environments, but if you have remote, if you see you have multiple uh, Docker hosts, you can actually manage them under this one umbrella here. So you'd be able to kind of have one centralized interface to manage all of your uh, Docker containers. So in my case, I'm gonna be adding more hosts at some point later on. So I will talk about pertaining a little bit more but just kind of wanted to give you a quick outline of this uh, tool. Other services that I use in my lab uh, include things like the uh, Microsoft 365 Admin Center. I do have a uh, Visual Studio uh, subscription that I use, and this gives me access to basically like Azure credits and a bunch of different uh, Office 365 services. So I do have, for example, my own phone uh, that is technically managed by a um, you know endpoint admin center slash office 365 uh, configuration so i kind of you know enroll my phone uh kind of like on a company portal through an app and then i'm able to basically manage my phone remotely i can wipe it i can do all kinds of different uh, tasks if i need to and i integrate also azure active directory with uh, one of my domain controllers that i have running on a different system that i'm going to talk about at a later point uh, but I like to kind of mimic uh, the enterprise environment as much as possible just to kind of be able to learn and try different things uh, and get a better understanding of how the technology works. Um, outside of the Microsoft services, I also do use some DevOps tooling like uh, GitLab. This is where I store uh, a lot of my uh, GitHub uh, configuration files. In other words, uh, sorry, I should say application or app config files. And this gives me the ability to easily restore when I download the application again after reinstalling Linux, or if I have to, let's say, uh, install this configuration package on another machine, I typically use GitLab for that. It allows me to quickly do like a Git clone, download my, you know, my scripts, and then I'm able to apply these scripts against the new configurations and then uh, basically have the same setup that I have on my main machine uh, bought on a different computer. Uh, Azure DevOps, I use this for CI CD, you know, learning, trying out things, again, just, just to pick up and learn things. Uh, same thing for Terraform Cloud. Uh, Rancher is another uh, container slash Kubernetes management platform that I'm looking to get into. I've heard a lot of things about Rancher, but I haven't really done anything with it. And kind of like Portainer, where you used to manage containers, and actually Portainer can also manage uh, Kubernetes from what I've seen, from my understanding, that is. Uh, Rancher is, seems to be like a better option for uh, Kubernetes management. Uh, and so uh, I wanted to kind of learn uh, a little bit about Rancher as well. So I went ahead and I deployed it, but I haven't really set it up yet. And then Jenkins is my automation server. And again, like like Rancher, I haven't really done anything with Jenkins yet. This is something just that I want to, uh, I want something that I want to learn uh, and kind of figure out as well as it's as I do hear about this uh, from time to time. And it seems like an interesting solution. And outside of that, I do have uh, just my. Uh, I guess the links to all the different clouds because in my current job, I do interface with a lot of different public clouds when it comes to the uh, tooling and the technology that we use. So uh, learning about these three different clouds is a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very important part of my job. So I need to always be, uh, you know, aware of what's going on, things that are, you know, evolving, things that are changing. 
And so I also often use uh, these different clouds in conjunction with all the other different services where I deploy things both on premises and in the cloud. Outside of that, this is kind of pretty much it. Uh, one thing I do want to mention as well is my Netgear switch. So this Netgear switch is basically uh, basically my access switch that I use for the uh, main network or the main home app. And so what uh, what this switch does for me essentially is is that it's you know it, it has very basic configuration, nothing special about it. Uh, the only thing that I've configured on it was uh, some VLAN configurations. Uh, like I added the Wi-Fi uh, network, I added a server uh, network on there as well. And I basically kind of split my traffic between the two. I don't want my Wi-Fi to be in the same network as my uh, server network. And uh, outside of that, I mean, I don't really use uh, this switch for anything else. It's just a very quiet, fanless one gig switch that fits my current workflow, fits my current environment. And this is why I pretty much went for it. Uh, at this point, uh, this is kind of like high level overview of what I have in my lab. I don't have anything else to talk about in this video, but I will be making more videos around these different technologies in a lot more detail. Uh, so if you did like this video today, please uh, feel free to subscribe and like the video. Uh, if there is a specific topic that you'd like to hear about, uh, feel free to make a comment and I'll definitely look into it. And outside of that, this is pretty much it. Uh, thank you for watching and I'm looking forward to the next video.